Hi guys, and welcome to the Is It Worth It for the Tetrarch, the Tier 2 Russian Premium Light Tank. This was a tank that was given out as a gift for the uh, 7.1 patch update slash New Year's gift. Um, it was given out free to pretty much any player who logged in around that time, but that was shortly before I started playing World of Tanks, so uh, I missed it first time round and ended up having to buy it in a bundle. It has appeared in various bundles in the gift shop since then, um, usually quite a pricey bundle, but I was planning to buy an FCM-50T anyway, so uh, being able to get the FCM-50T with a Tetriarch thrown in was very, very nice. Should this appear in future, and you decide to pick it up as part of a package, well, is it worth picking it up because it's part of a package, or you're picking up the package because it has this tank? That's the question. Is this tank good? Well, let's take a look. First of all, the uh, history of this tank. It is a Vickers. This is a British tank. It is a uh, Vickers, and... Uh, it's been, it was manufactured between the years 1936 and 1942. Not that many were manufactured, and even fewer were sent to the uh, Russians as uh, part of the Lend-Lease program. So only 20 tanks were shipped to Russia, but uh, those that de uh, were shipped actually did see combat. I am very surprised that it is not part of the uh, British lines. The uh, British don't have that many tanks to begin with. And uh, I am really, really surprised that uh, the Tetriarch, or a version of it, hasn't been uh, sneaked in somewhere around here, but uh, there's always the future. So as always, the best way to uh, put the Tetriarch into perspective is to compare it against the other tier 2 light tanks in the game. I'm looking forward to this because this is the final tier 2 review. There are no more tier 2 premium tanks in the game that I don't own or are available. So this is the last of the tier 2 reviews and after this we're going to be moving on to tier 3. But we're just going to compare it against the other tier 2 tanks. And there we go. I am not going to be comparing it against the uh, PC-38H, because the PC-38H, as I mentioned in its review, plays differently. It's a light tank, but it plays like a heavy tank. So what I've done is I'm going to be comparing it against the uh, Vickers Light Mark 6C, uh, which is probably its direct competitor, also a Vickers tank, also manufactured around the same time. Um, I'm going to be comparing it with the uh, T2 Light, which is, uh, if you've been watching my reviews, probably my favorite tier 2 premium tank, although its matchmaking can get newer players into trouble. Uh, the T1E6, which was another free tank given out, and the T7 Combat Car, yet another free tank that was given out. And uh, we're going to take a look at the hit points, and the Tetriarch finishes bottom. So, it's only got... 10 less hit points than most of the other tanks, the T1E6 is 160 hit points, but uh, at low tier games those 10 hit points can make a difference. It uh, is one of the lighter tanks, it comes in at 7.5 tons, they're fully stocked, I've got all my equipment on it, uh, compared to 5 tons on the Light 6C. The uh, T2 light slightly heavier, but not much. T26 is uh, heavier again, and then the T7 combat car is the heaviest. Its engine power is pretty good. It's got a 180 horsepower engine compared to 88, uh, but it's not as good as the others. 265 on the T2 light, 244 on the T1E6, and 262 on the T7 combat car. But the engine's pushing less weight, which uh, means that it does have a pretty good top speed. So a 64 kilometers per hour top speed limit compared to 52 on the Light 6C, 72 on the T2 Light, but that's the one of the fastest tanks in the game, 48 on the T1E6, and 38 on the T7 combat car. So it's fast. This thing is definitely fast. It's got a very, very good traverse speed of 47 degrees per second compared to 40, 42, and 44. But the T2 Lite has it 
matched with uh, also a uh, 47 per, uh, degree per second uh, traverse speed. So I think this little clip here is going to uh, show the speed perfectly. We are uh, here on mines, I'm here on my Tetriarch, and right beside me we've got a T2 Lite, which is uh, one of my favorite low tier premium tanks, but it's also one of the quickest, if not the quickest. And uh, we've spawned pretty much beside each other, and uh, you missed it during the countdown, but he's been asking me to follow him, so uh, here we go. He actually starts to drive backwards, and that now he's accelerating. I've got a head start on him, and I'm just going to try and get up the hill before he does. So I'm winning, I'm winning, I'm winning. And look at the difference in speed. He was able to catch me, he was able to overtake me, and he was able to get up the hill slightly before I did, even though I had a head start. So, having said that, the rest of my team are only now arriving, and uh, that just shows you how quick this tank is, but there are quicker tanks. So on paper, the speed limit and the uh, traverse speed make this tank very, very nimble and very, very quick, but that's just on paper, on this particular screen. The, ter the uh, terrain resistance on the Tetriarch is incredibly poor, and that means that while this tank is on firm ground, on city maps, you're going to be obtaining that top speed and you're going to be getting 47 degrees per second traverse speed. As soon as you hit uh, any terrain that has resistance at all, uh, swampy, marshy terrain, uh, cross country, this is uh, one of the Tetriarch's weak points. Uh, it turns really, really badly on uh, high resistance terrain. It accelerates badly, and uh, even though the stats don't show it, it does make this tank a pain in the ass to play on certain maps, for example, Malinovka. Armor-wise, compared to the other light tanks, it does pretty well. It's got 16 uh, millimeters of armor in front, 14 on the sides, and 10 to the uh, rear. But again, it's a light tank, and it's a tier 2 light tank, which means that armor counts for nothing. If, for example, the Tetriarch were to go head-to-head -to -head against any of these other tanks, the Light 6C, the T2 Light, the T7 Combat Car, and even the T1E6, these tanks would kill it long before the Tetriarch would be able to kill them. Uh, this is not a tank you can go head to head with, especially with this armor. Anything with an autoloader is going to go straight through it and it's going to kill you. So with the Tetriarch you need to be sneaky. You need to uh, be a, more of a support tank, use your gun from a distance, don't try and go head to head with any enemy tanks, it's not going to end well. You don't have the uh, traverse speed to be able to circle them to death, and you don't have the armor to uh, withstand any shots. The turret traverse speed is again very, very good at 41 degrees per second, uh, 36, 39, 38, and 24. So it is the best of all the tier 2 light premiums. But again, like I say, even though on paper, <laughs> the speed with the traverse speed combined with the turret traverse speed make this thing seem as if it could circle enemy tanks to death. That's not going to happen. Ground resistance uh, and poor armor mean that you will die if you try to get into any close range engagements. The view range is poor and this is my biggest problem with the tank. Uh, it's my biggest problem with the T2 Lite, but the T2 Lite makes up for it in other ways. And I don't play the T1E6 enough or like it enough to uh, have an opinion. But uh, the view range pretty much kills this tank. The view range means that I had to learn a completely different way of playing this tank. And it was uh, not the way I was looking forward to playing it. And I'll be honest with you guys, I struggled in the Tetriarch when I first started playing it, simply because I was trying to use it like a scout, because I was trying to use its speed, I was trying to use its traverse speed, its turret traverse speed, I was using it as a frontline attacker, and it 
just did not work out. I was getting my butt kicked. Even when I was playing passively on the front line, I was constantly being spotted. Uh, for a long time, I thought there was something wrong with the camo rating on this tank. Um, it just seemed that enemy tanks were able to spot me long before I could spot them, and uh, I thought there was something wrong with the camo range and uh, or camo values. And after doing a little bit of research, again, it's another hidden fact. But yes, the camo value on the Tetriarch is not that good. The camo value on all the other tier 2 premiums is uh, slightly better. So the camo value isn't bad, but other tier 2 light tanks have better camo value. But still, that's not that big an issue unless you have poor view range, and the Tetriarch does. So I was getting spotted moving into position long before I was able to spot enemy tanks, and because I have no armor, I was getting killed long before I could spot other enemy tanks, and I thought the tank was broken. But it was simply a combination of fairly poor camo value for a light tank, and very, very poor view range. So it doesn't make for a very good scout, which is a shame, because the signal range is 545, which at tier 2 is amazing you can stay in contact with most of the tanks on the battlefield with 545 meters of view range, or signal range, but uh, just the view range causes problems. And once again, even though this has all the characteristics to be an amazing scout, that view range just kills it, and uh, we're going to put that to the test here on uh, Malinovka. And uh, this is where I like to test all my scouts, as you'll know from previous reviews. So let's see how the Tetriarch does when I put it through the scouting Malinovka review. So TA team is telling us to spot fast. And I'm going to head up to. Uh, some of my favorite bushes, just like I do in uh, other light tank reviews. And you know how strong this position is. So I'm moving as far forward in the bush as possible without exposing any of my tank. I'm going to sit here, I'm going to let my binox kick in. And we've spotted one. One enemy tank spotted. Okay, we've spotted another one. But he's disappeared already. He's sitting in the open and he's disappeared. So, we are getting some spots. But not very many. Let's speed it up a little bit more. We'll get it on times four now. Now, I'm not spotting these guys. They've been spotted by the T-60. But our team are advancing. I decide to advance up to the next bush to see if I spot anything. Lots and lots of uh, enemy tanks on the other flank. It's shooting fish in a barrel. So three enemy tanks left. Trying to get my gun into a position to shoot them. And as you can see from that, we only ended up spotting four 
enemy vehicles. Now, that is an incredibly strong bush for a tank with any sort of view range, but we only ended up spotting four. So we detected four, we damaged four, we destroyed three. And even though you can spot with this tank the limited view range, just means you're not going to have any monster scout games, not like you'd expect in other tanks. So let's talk about this gun. This gun is a two pounder. Uh, it is not an autoloader. It is not a machine gun like a lot of the other tier two premium tanks. It is a proper gun and what a gun. The uh, rate of fire of 21. <laughs> it seems very, very poor when you compare it to the others. 122, 108, 42 on the T-186 and 116 on the T-7 combat car. But these are machine guns and autoloaders. This is a proper gun. And uh, at 21 rounds a minute, you're going to be firing off a shot every three seconds or just under every three seconds. Uh, so the rate of fire is very, very good. Uh, it's a 40 millimeter, which means that uh, you've got 45 average damage per shot. And on top of that, you've got 64 millimeters of pen with standard ammo and 121 millimeters of penetration with premium ammo. That is amazing, especially at tier 2. T18s, no problem. 50 millimeters of frontal armor, don't care. Just going to shoot you straight through the front. Um, I love the gun on this thing and the gun is what determines how I've had success in the Tetriarch. Uh, you need to play this tank a little bit more passively than you'd like. You have all this horsepower, you've got all this speed and you want to put it to use but you've got to resist. Use that speed to get into position early and then forget about it because you're going to be a support tank in a Tetriarch. You're going to be sniping, you're going to be supporting and you're pretty much going to try and stay away from the front line or if you're going to be on the front line you need to be ready to run away as soon as things start going against you. The uh, accuracy of 0.4 is pretty good. Uh, 0.4 is not great but considering it's only tier 2 it's pretty good accuracy. Aim time of 2.3 not great but not bad. It's a really really good gun. The gun is definitely the best feature of the tank. It is just amazing for tier 2. And uh, that's 64 mils of penetration and 45 damage along with the rate of fire means you don't have to worry about T-18s or pretty much any tank you're going to come up and face. Um, you're going to be able to pen them all. You just have to be able to get the gun into position and that's where the tank's second main strength is, which is its speed. However, that speed only counts on firm ground. The uh, traverse speed and the uh, ground resistance on the uh, Tetriarch are horrible. Uh, so on rough ground, swampy ground, you are really, really going to struggle to uh, get any sort of speed or momentum. You're going to really, really struggle to get to uh, get the tank turned around, but uh, here on Himmelsdorf we don't have that issue. So uh, let's uh, take a look at this gun in action. So we're up to 55, almost 60 kilometers an hour on the straight. And I'm leaving my team well behind. Slowing down to about 30 kilometers on the slope. But I'm up here on the hill all by myself. So I haven't spotted anything on the enemy team that may or may not have come up the hill. Just going to take a quick poke. Okay, there we go. 
So, we've reached the top of the hill well before enemy tanks. And we're just going to have to poke these guys, shoot and pull back before they can return fire. Unfortunately, missed that one. Okay. And fortunately, bounce on the Hago, he doesn't. And now I'm down to 12 health. So, uh, mentioned it, but uh, you've got no armor. Anything that shoots at you is probably going to pen you. So my best bet is to wait for the Hago to come around the corner, and then I'm just going to track him. But he doesn't seem to be interested. He's actually pulling back. So uh, I'm going to put the gun into action here. There are too many targets down here to ignore. So I'm keeping an eye on the minimap. As soon as that red dot appears behind me, I am going to be getting out of here. But that rate of fire, that pen, means I can just... Okay, red dot behind me. And now it's time to get out of here. But you can see the rate of fire. is awesome. So uh, we've already picked up three kills, but we picked up two kills in the space of a few seconds. Courtesy of this amazing gun. So now I'm using the speed to get away. I'm a one-hit kill. I need to get into a position where I can uh, shoot with a very, very little chance of uh, return fire. So I know Artie's advancing. There he is. So we track him. Finish him off. We're now being capped. We're capping, but we're being capped. And, uh, cap reset. So I go on the hill behind me, but he shouldn't be able to get shots on me. Okay, that's both enemy tanks uh, reset. One of them is dead. Okay, M2 light is focused on the T-18. So we'll just speed it up. He dies before I get there. And uh, we are going to win by capping. Let's talk about the crew. Well, we have a commander, we have a gunner, and we have a driver. Um, only three crew members. So the Tetriarch does not make a very good crew trainer. And uh, for a couple of reasons. One, it's only got three crew members, but two... Again, remember, it's a Russian light tank, and uh, when we look at the Russian light tanks, what are you going to be training a Russian light tank crew for? You have your lower tier light tanks, you got the T-50, a tier 4 scout, and then you don't have any light tanks at uh, tier 5, and you've got to get to tier 6 before you get to the MT-25, which is the next particular light tank. So, uh, even the MT-25 requires a radio operator and a loader. So, it is not a very, very good crew trainer. And, you know, pretty much should know my position on the MT-25 by now. It's okay, but uh, it's a scout and I don't own it, and that says a lot. So, uh, crew training, not great. 
Equipment wise, like for most of my low tier uh, scouts, I've gone for Vents, which uh, gives me a uh, plus 5 to all crew skills. Um, so that's 5% better view range, 5% better traverse speed, 5% pretty much everything. Um, vents on every tank that can fit it. Uh, I've also gone for the standard camo net because, again, the camo values on this tank aren't great, and Binox. What other equipment is available? Well, we can fit it with a light spall liner, uh, but again, light spall liner on a light tank, completely and utterly a waste of money. We can put coated optics on it, and again, coated optics would be fine for a fast and maneuverable tank, but 10% added to 260 view range is not very much. It's only going to get you another 26 meters of view range. Not worth it. I think the 25% you get from the Binox much much more viable than the coated optics. Um, enhanced gun laying drive is a possibility but 2.3 aiming time is not bad and uh, I think it's more important to get Binox, camo net and vent on this tank than uh, a enhanced gun laying drive and a toolbox always good but not on a low tier tank you don't have the hit points and I just don't see it being viable at all alright it is time for that part of the review where I show you a game that tries to put everything I've talked about so far into perspective uh, I'll try and show all the strengths the weaknesses of the tank in one replay and uh, we find ourselves here on Himmelsdorf again and uh, I'm starting in the south again, but uh, here we go. So once again, the plan is to use my speed and get up the hill. And on firm ground, on a map like Himmelsdorf, you really don't re notice the uh, really poor traverse and ground resistance. I've got a T2 medium coming up here with me. And it looks as if there's a T18 going to be coming over this way as well. So first to the top of the hill. Going to try and put this gun into action. But I've managed to get myself spotted. So there's a uh, T7 or T7 combat car behind me. Now he can eat me alive. He's got an autoloader. He can do some serious, serious damage against me. But we do have a T-18. So, just need to put my gun into action. We pick off the uh, FTAC. There's a light 6C advancing. T-7 combat car is about to uh, flank me. I'm aware of that. So, I cannot stand up to autoloaders. I simply do not have the uh, armor. So my best bet is to actually get out of here. But uh, I'm going to wait. Going to see if I can get some shots on the T7. Fortunately, fire before being fully aimed. T7 isn't focused on me. And I'm hoping he's going to keep coming, and he does. And he's out of ammo. So there we go. Three of us came up the hill, and uh, we've killed four enemy tanks up here, and all three of us are still alive on pretty much full health. So, know your enemy. And again, we get to put this amazing gun into action. So 
So up to four kills. But now it is time to use the uh, speed and wrap this game up. It's 11-3 at the moment, so it's a pretty comprehensive victory. It's just a matter of getting as much damage and uh, maybe a couple more kills as possible before the game is over. But I really have found you need to play this tank smart and play depending on uh, what enemy tanks you're playing. So there's ha uh, there's the uh, top gun. And I don't believe I'm going to get around to the PZ-35T in time. But I'm still going to try. It looks like I am. I missed the shot. No! There we go. Seven kills on Himmelsdorf in a tank with no armor. So to sum up, if the Tetrarch appears in the gift shop as part of a package in future or even as a single purchase, is it worth it? <laughs> That's a difficult one, guys. That's another really, really difficult one. Um... If there was any tier 2 light tank, premium tank, I wanted to play for fun, it would be the T2 light. But the Tetriarch, now that I finally figured the tank out, would probably come a close second. If I compare it to the other free tanks, would I rather be driving a Tetriarch over a T1E6, a light 6C, or a T7 combat car? Yes, definitely. 100%. Absolutely. It's this gun. This gun is what makes the tank. And if you ignore the fact you're fast and just simply focus on using and getting into positions where you can use this gun, um, the Tetriarch can be a joy. But as I said, it took a lot of work to figure out how to play it well. And it's not very user friendly. It's not a good crew trainer. And once again, because it's a Soviet light tank, how many people are going to be tra training up a crew for the MT-25 or even managing to uh, keep an MT-25 in their garage? So I think it comes down to this. If you were planning to buy a package to purchase another tank, like I did, and as I say, I bought the package in order to get the gold, in order to get an FCM-50T, and the Tetriarch was thrown in for free. Then, uh, yeah, if you can pick it up as a package, and uh, yeah, it's probably worth it. But if you're planning to buy 10,000 gold because there's a Tetriarch thrown in in the bundle, this tank is not worth 50 euros, guys. It's a... It's a nice tank. It took me a, a while to learn how to get the most out of it, but... Um, if you're buying it simply for the tank, I don't think it's worth it. Not in the long term. But if you're going to be picking it up as a collector, or you're going to be picking it up as a freebie because you're buying another package anyway, then go for it. It's a, it's a pretty good tank. It just requires a little bit of practice and a little bit of understanding. But uh, this is a tough one to call because I do like the Tetriarch. But I don't think it's been worth it at the uh, prices Wargaming have been selling it at. Especially considering it was a free tank originally. So there you go. I've said it. I like it. If you're a collector or get it for free as part of a bundle, go for it. But if you're buying a package simply to get a Tetriarch, I don't think it's worth it. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.